Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, Mike from Comp3 Interactive here and today we've got the third and probably the final part of my How to Save Data mini-series First we had Player Press, then we had JSON Serialization and now we're down to the big boys which are binary serialized files So this is the best way, in my opinion, to be saving sensitive data for your games so you won't want to miss this so without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Now the eagle-eyed viewers among you may realise that I'm just going to reuse the project that I used for my JSON serialization video. So if you haven't watched that, you should, and you can watch it right here. But for the ones that haven't watched it, I'll give you again a brief overview of what the project is. We have a save object which contains the player's name, level, gold and amount of lives and this class is a serializable class. Now we need to mark any classes that we want to save the data of as serializable to allow Unity to do that. We also have a save test method which has a reference to a save object that we can see in the inspector and whenever we press the spacebar we save our data and when we press the return key we load our data. So the only thing we're missing is the most important class and that's going to be our save manager. So we'll create that and open it up in Visual Studio, get rid of the starting update and what we're going to do we're going to make this a static class so we can't create an instance of it but we'll be able to access the fields if we want to or methods remotely outside of the class and anywhere in our project. So we'll remove mono behavior and we'll make this a static class. Now we're going to be needing a few namespaces for this. We're going to be needing system.io. We're going to need system.runtime.serialization. And we're going to need system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't remember that, I've got it written down on my second monitor. <laughs> right, so we'll start by defining our variables. Our first is going to be a public static string for a directory. Another public static string for a file name. And that should be all we need there. Then we can go ahead and create a public static void save. Save is going to need to take in as a parameter a save object. We'll call that SO. We'll have another method, public static. This time, for the load method, we're going to return a save object and we'll call that load. And we'll make two more private methods because we'll only need these within our save manager class. So we'll create a public static bool save exists and a private static string get full path. Actually just for ease we'll create one more private static bool directory exists as well. Now we'll start by populating our utility methods here. So we'll start with the save exists. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to return file, which is part of the system.io namespace, exists, and we'll pass in get full path. So that means logically next, we should be creating our get full path method, which is going to return application dot persistent data path. Now I like to use application dot persistent data path because regardless of the platform that you're working on, Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS or Android, application dot persistent data path will always exist. So we don't need to check for that part of the directory. So now we'll stitch together a slash followed by our custom directory followed by another slash, followed by our file name. 
Now the reason I put this in a method is just because, like you see here, I can just check the get full path, which is going to return all this. That saves me every time I want to access a file or the directory, I can just call get full path instead of typing out all of this. And finally, for our directory exists, similarly to the file exists, we'll check if directory dot exists and we'll pass in our application dot persistent data path plus slash plus directory so we've got our utility methods let's get saving and loading we'll start logically with the save method so inside the save method is where we're going to need our binary formatter so we'll grab a binary formatter we'll call it bf and we'll set it to a new binary formatter. We're also going to want to create a file stream for saving our actual file. So we'll just call this file and we'll set this to file dot create and we will get the full path. So what that's going to do, that's going to create a new file at our full path directory. If the file already exists, we will overwrite it instead. So now all we have to do is call bf.serialize. We'll pass in the file where we want to save it. And then we'll pass in the object that we want to serialize, which is our SO, our save object. And after this, we want to make sure that we close off our file stream. If you don't, and then you try and save again, then the file will already be open and you'll get all sorts of errors. So file.close, extremely important do not forget to do that and these four lines of code are all you're going to need to save all the data you like so let's move on down to our load method in here we're going to want to check if our save exists and as you'll remember all this is doing is returning if the file exists at the full path so if we already have a save file we're going to want to try and load it. So we'll surround this in a try catch block. And the thing that we're going to try and catch is a, a serialization exception. And if we get this exception, currently we'll just put out a debug.log fail to load file. The most common reason for getting this exception is if somebody tries to manually amend this file and they don't know what they're doing and they corrupt the file itself. So in this instance, you're gonna you're not gonna want to put out a debug.log. You're gonna want to actually catch the exception and either return a completely empty file to overwrite or tell the player off because they've tried to cheat. Either way, if this exception hits, then you're not gonna be able to load the data. So you've got to cater for that in your own way. So, on to the loading. Again, we're going to need a binary formatter. We'll call it BF again, and again, set it to a new binary formatter. Another file stream, we'll call file. This time, we're going to call file.open. We're going to get the full path, and we're going to open it in file mode.open. We'll then create a new save object that we're going to return. We'll call that SO. And we'll set that equal to our binary formatter.deserialize. And we're going to want to deserialize the file. Now, this is going to give you an error because currently deserialize returns this data as type object. And we're trying to put it as type save object. So we can cast this using brackets to save object. So now the data that it deserializes, it'll try and pass into a save object for us. And then again, just like before, we want to close off that file so we don't get any errors. Now that we've got our data, we can return SO. And just on the outside here, we want to make sure that we return something so we'll return no, you could also create the save object outside of the if statement and just return a new empty save object. 
Either way will work for this instance, it's up to you, again, to pick the one that's right for you. So the final thing that we have to do is define our directory and our file name. So our directory, we're going to want to be called save data, and our file name we'll call mysave.txt. And that should be our save and load class completed. All we need to do is call our save manager dot save pass in our save object and then set the save object that we have in the inspector to save manager dot load there is one more thing that we forgot to do and that's in our save method we want to make sure that our directory exists like i said before application dot persistent data path will always exist but not necessarily application.persistentdatapath slash save data. So in our save data, if a directory does not exist, we'll do directory dot create directory. And we want that to be our full directory string. So if we try and save for the first time, application.persistentdatapath slash save data won't exist. Directory exists will return false. So we'll create that directory. So we can go ahead and test this in Unity. So if we play the game, we can see that our save test attached to our player has no data in it. So I'll set Mike, 9001, 100 gold, and five lives. Now if we press the space bar, we've just saved our data. So again, if we just type whatever we like in here, and then without resaving, if we press the return key, we can see everything snaps back to what it was originally. That shows that we have our save file. And we can see that if we navigate to a persistent data path on Windows, that's Windows users, your user, application data, local law, whatever company name you've set within unity i haven't set one so it's just come through as default and then my tutorials project and we can see inside here we have a save data folder which is our directory that we created and we have my save dot text if we open that we can see it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that's because it's written in a binary format so we can see if i try um amend that, I'll change that D to an E. I have no idea what that does. I'll play the game and I'll try and load the data. And we see, we get our fail to load file. The file's been corrupted. Naughty, naughty. And another thing that's really good about this method to just give it that little bit of extra security, obviously you wouldn't want to call the, your save file my save. That's just asking for people to try and amend it. So you can name that whatever you like, but the interesting part is it doesn't have to be a .txt. We can call this whatever we want. So I'll call this .comp3. We can then delete this and rerun our game. Set the data to whatever we like. Save and leave. See that we've got our save data back and we have a .comp3 file type. We try and open that, it doesn't understand it. Now, you can always either edit with Notepad or any other editor, and it'll still show, but it just makes it that little bit more difficult for people who don't really know what they're doing to amend your save data. So I hope you can see how easy it is to implement a saving and loading system into your game and keep that data secure between sessions. So I hope this has been useful for you, and I'll see you again very soon. If you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive, and I'll see you again soon.